Thank you so much. Well, I think it's easier to, to take from the floor and uh, uh, thank you for the previous speak about the electrosensitivity. And I would like to say that we may be all more or less sensitive to, um, to electromagnetic fields. Some get uh, problems and others do not. And um, I will uh, talk about uh, the cancer aspect. And maybe you can see a little from the slides here. Uh, I have been working as an oncologist, a medical doctor for many years and started my research on stuff like Agent Orange, PCB, DDT, uh, other pesticides, glyphosate now, which uh, Monsanto doesn't like our results at all because we find an increased risk for non-Hodgkin lymphoma, etc. Well, I'm anyhow uh, now retired and actually started a foundation where we try to go on with uh, uh, research very much on the electromagnetic fields area because it's uh, very interesting. As you can see from uh, this, the global uh, saturation of mobile phones is rapidly increasing 100 percent. And um, uh, it's uh, now we have five, the fifth generation that is coming and uh, uh, which may uh, increase the radiation even more. Uh, I would need a pointer here, I see. This is the results on glioma, which is one brain cancer type. And uh, let's see. see if this works. Uh, and uh, uh, there is clearly and obviously an increased risk for glioma. These are the studies uh, from uh, uh, Interfon, uh, the Corot study from French, our studies. And um, in summary, we can find an increased risk for um, glioma in the brain, which is doubled. It's statistically significant. And these results were the basis for IARC classification of group 2B. And um, there have come more results which confirms this. And if you look over a uh, uh, number of hours of use, you can see that there is a steadily increasing risk. The more you use it, the more the higher the risk. Uh, and also, if you look into the area of the brain where you have the highest uh, concentration of the exposure to radio frequency radiation, the risk is highest in that area. I think some can get handouts of these if you want so. Uh, and there is also an increasing risk. The longer time you have used the mobile phone, the higher the risk, as you can see on the slope going up. So it's about uh, three times uh, higher if you have used it for uh, 10 to 15 years. Uh, we have also shown that um, uh, the risk is higher in the youngest group. Those who start the use before the age of 20 have a higher risk than if you start uh, at an older age. And that can be of some biological sense because we know that uh, the young brain is more sensitive than the old one. Uh, and um, the interesting here is the NTP study, which uh, the National Toxicology Program, uh, which shows an increased risk for glioma. The, the exposure is on uh, uh, GSM, SAR, 1.53 and 6 uh, watt per, per kilogram, which is somewhat in the border where you can get from mobile phones. You have also the glial cell hyperplasia, and these are the precursors to uh, glioma. So there's a proliferation of glial cells in the brain, but also an increased risk of glioma. And there has been quite a lot of discussion of these results in the United States with a hearing a couple of weeks ago. The other one is the Ramazzini Institute red study that came a couple of weeks ago from Italy. And um, uh, again, they looked at the glial cell hyperplasia, these cells in the brain, and also the glioma, the malignant tumors. We have the control, which is the red, and then we have three exposure groups. And you can see that both in male and female reds, there is an increasing risk for glioma and glial cell hyperplasia. So now we have two new red studies that both show an increased risk for glioma. We can also see that um, the incidence is going up for um, 
brain tumors in Sweden with a, a break about 2006 or 2007. So, so numbers are going up of brain tumors. And also this uh, study from England, which came one month ago, that shows the bold line, the uh, glioblastoma, mal uh, malignant type of glioma, the most malignant where people die within one year, that you have an increasing risk uh, to get um, an increased number in the areas of the brain where you have most exposure, that is the temporal area and the frontal area. So uh, now you have both uh, human epidemiology, you have animal data and you have cancer statistics which show the same size, uh, thing. The other tumor which is uh, associated with uh, mobile phone use is uh, acoustic nevrinoma, which is in the ear. And uh, you have actually a free way of the radiation into that area from when you use the handheld brain. And this, there are all, the handheld mobile phone or also a cordless phone, a decked phone. Uh, and the results are quite consistent, both uh, from our studies and the interphone, giving about uh, two to three times increased risk. Uh, and this is supported by, again by the NTP study, which shows schwannomas. This is the same type of uh, tumor or same, cell, same type of, of cells that are in the acoustic nevrinoma. And uh, these are significant findings of an increased risk in different dosages of uh, uh, radiofrequency radiation. And again, Ramazzini Institute, as you can see here with the blue lines, male reds, female reds, and in total gives a higher risk of these uh, tumor types as compared to the controls, which are the red ones. So again, it's a consistent finding between epidemiology and animal studies, which is quite rare, actually. I mean, taking smoking and lung cancer, it took a very long time before we knew exactly the mechanism and had the same findings. Well, uh, we have looked into, uh, and I don't think you can see this really, about uh, exposure from base stations uh, and compared to the exposure in the animal studies. And I can just say that we are there in the exposure in the environment that's similar as used in these animal studies. Uh, these are measurements from uh, Finland, actually, where you have quite high exposure close to base stations. Uh, and um, I'm not going more in de de detail on this, but just saying that these are the same exposures at, as in the animal studies. So we are actually, as Ole said, <laughs> guinea pigs. We are in an experimental condition. Uh, and um, I'm sorry that it's so difficult to see here about the SRR. You know, uh, we have SRR of two watt per kilogram, which is the blue lines. Uh, or blue, uh, blue staples here, but these are tested under the condition that you held the phone at some distance from the brain. If you put it close to the brain, you will find the red staples shown in a uh, study from France. So it's two to three times higher real exposure. It goes up to six or seven watt per kilogram, especially when the phone is starting to be used. So you have a very high exposure to the brain, and it's higher actually than in the animal studies showing cancer. So again, this fits that animals show cancer in the same exposure level that we have in human beings, and we find an increased risk for cancer in humans. Uh, we have, um, you saw this about the rat brain cells and also the reactive oxygen species. So we have mechanisms now how this is affecting human beings. Reactive oxygen species can attack DNA and um, actually adding uh, E vitamin uh, anti, uh, 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 antioxidant E vitamin, you can block this reaction. There's also the voltage uh, uh, calcium channel uh, method, uh, link, which uh, has been shown by Martin Pall very elegantly, and which can explain a myriad of different uh, uh, biological findings, both the electrosensitive finding and also in plants and animals and so on, because this is a, a system which is universal. So it's affected by, by radio frequency radiation. So the conclusion is that we have an increased risk for glioma, 
brain cancer and acoustic neurinoma, that's the ear cancer. We have a higher risk for tumors on the same side of the brain as the wireless phone has been used. And um, uh, also in the area of the brain where the highest radiation is. So this is kind of a biological gradient. We have um, highest um, uh, risk in those persons who started the use before the age of 20 years. And uh, we had also a shorter survival in those um, patients with a glioblastoma multiforme who had used uh, uh, mobile phones. So it doesn't not only increase the risk, but it, in it gives a decreased survival, which shows that there is a more aggressive tumor type that you get from mobile phone radiation, which is also shown actually by some markers for how aggressive the tumor is. So based on the IARC uh, uh, preamble, you mentioned the group 2B, which is from 2011. I was part of that uh, evaluation. Now there is much that says that it should be a group 1. It's a complete carcinogen. And this will be re-evaluated by IAC rather soon. And this will uh, certainly change the situation, because if it's a, a carcinogen like in the same category, like uh, dioxin, like uh, smoking, etc., then we need to act. because. As Ulle said, no, so far nothing has happened. I will skip this about uh, electrosensitivity and just give a short comments on our environmental exposure. This is a place in uh, old town in Stockholm where you can see the two base stations which are quite low actually on the second to third floor. And here you can see the exposure, which is the upper line going over some time and in our measurements. The red line is the value for biological effects of 30 microwatt per square meter, as Ulle mentioned. And you can see that we are high above. Those who are sitting in that area have a very high exposure to uh, passive radio frequency radiation. And this is another ethical question. How much should we allow each other to be exposed uh, passively? It's one thing if you use the mobile phone, because that's your choice. But if you go out on the streets, should you really be so exposed? If you take out the base station, the, uh, which we can do mathematically, you can see that the exposure drops quite dramatically and is actually below the safety limit. Here is an apartment in Östermalm in Stockholm, uh, the nice area where they have this group of base stations on the top of the roof. There are actually two groups of base stations. And you can see this, the boys' bedroom. It's attacked constantly by, by radio frequency radiation. You can see these peaks going up all over the day and night. And the, the, this goes down a little during the night from no, one o'clock in the night, but goes up in the daytime again. And, and you can see it's much above the uh, 10 or uh, 30 microwatt, which is some kind of level for biological effects. And again, if we um, uh, exclude the base station contribution, then you can see that there's no problem anymore with that radiation. So again, if a family lives in a house, in a building, and is exposed from nearby base stations, they can't do much, because in Sweden, they use uh, the outdated ICNIRP values, which is sky high, and don't consider these biological effects. Um, I will not go so much into this, but I, yes, this slide shows that there's a group of same persons which actually are involved in, in WHO, in ICNIRP, in UK, uh, in the Swedish Protection Agency, etc. And these com come out with the same conclusions all the time, which is the ICNIRP conclusion. The persons sit in ICNIRP, they decide the sky high. Uh, exposure level, then they sit in other groups, and they will not uh, say anything else than they have decided in ICNIRP. And they sit in multiple committees, and then they can cite each other. You see here in UK they said so, in Sweden they said so, in, in WHO they said oh, etc. So they cite each other, but those who are not informed, they think that there are several multitude of committees, but these are the same persons. So it's... How much? Okay, 10 minutes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, uh, yeah, we made a, a, a meeting at WHO one year ago and tried to convince them that this is a serious problem. They said, ICNIRP is our NGO, it's our body of information, and we don't consider it. We said, okay. 
we can come back and give more information. They said, we are not welcome. We measured the, actually the WHO building in Geneva, and you can see how low they are in radiation. It's not a problem there, really. They are below this red line, and we have published this. And the ne next issue will, of course, be 5G, which is promoted without any uh, 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 scientific evidence how sure it is. Uh, and the um, uh, conclusion is we are not protected. Uh, the environment is not protected. It's not lo no longer a scientific issue. We know there are biological effects. We know there is a cancer effect. There are other effects. And it's time for politicians and decision makers to act. As Ulle said, we can scream Mantak. how much as possible, but nothing happens. Uh, the, uh, it's uh, quite obvious in Sweden that the ADHD uh, attention deficit hyperactivity is increasing as well as autism. But the problem is also that uh, uh, parents are demanding for a diagnosis on their child. So there is a kind of bias, uh, uh, shadow in these figures, because if they got the di diagnosis, they will have some medical treatment. They can have also the assistant in school, etc. So. It's not, uh, it seems to be an increase, but uh, the numbers are difficult to interpret because, as you say, there are other interactive factors in the society which can play at the same time. But there's for certain that, uh, uh, like the tumors in the central uh, area of, of uh, the brain, the pituitary tumors, they are increasing. And that just that type of tumor was found in the uh, NTP study. Uh, there's something in the NTP study uh, in the USA which is worrying, and it's that they found an uh, activity on the myocard, on the, on the, on the heart, with an uh, kind of inflammatory or uh, such kind of, of, of problem. And we, know, we have seen in the Swedish statistics that these myocarditis are increasing, actually. So be cautious not to have the mobile phone in the pocket close to the, to the heart. But it's, as, as again, I, I would say that it's quite uh, obvious with the br uh, brain tumors and the uh, acoustic neuronomas. Uh, and if we concentrate on them, them that's time for action. That's enough. We don't need more. It's uh, extremely difficult to get the research for this area, so it's a uh, very low priority in, in Sweden. And uh, the problem is, of course, that there are many conflicts of interest, and uh, there is big money in the whole area, and big money doesn't want to listen or hear anything about problems. There is also a, a bias with conflicts of interest in, in some researchers, which uh, has an impact on how the money is used and who gets the money, how the results are interpreted, etc. WHO has had a committee on this area which was basically run by people which were on this slide I showed before. They had connection to ICNIP and uh, it's uh, halt. They haven't uh, presented their uh, result as yet, although it, although it should have been done for a couple of years ago. IARC, International Agency for Research on Cancer, is uh, rather objective as to WHO. They have their own agenda and their own method to classify uh, cancer-causing agents. And they will evaluate this one again. Uh, what I heard last uh, fall was that they were wait, waiting on this NTP study, which we have discussed several times, and also the Armasini Institute, and then they will make a new uh, re-evaluation. But there is no fixed date so far, and this is like Colosseum. It's a big issue to, to start and collect all the people uh, together, and there is uh, the committee I was on uh, for in 2011. We had uh, almost one year work before uh, the group was gathered. So, so it takes time. S from time to time, they make their own re-evaluation without having this committee from the whole world. And that's, that's a, a more quick method. But, but how it will be, I, I don't know. But I think uh, uh, the IARC decision will uh, change uh, this whole area if they come up uh, that is a cancer-causing agent uh, more uh, severe, severe, severely than before.
So we have to wait for that, I guess. But there's a problem with the fifth generation, which is implemented with no research on the biological effects. It will be millimeter waves, 90% absorbed by the skin. Other problems, we don't know. We have five minutes to back to the whole hearing, and we have not come again with all the Folketingsmedlemmer. Yeah, I'm going to look at it. Stine Brix, thank you. Just to comment that there are, as you said, the endocrine disruptors are associated with the uh, problems with fertility in men. So th that's pretty well known. And you have a very famous researcher in Denmark, Nils Skagebeck, who has been researching that. So there can be multifactorial uh, issues. Otherwise, I was just to, I forgot to mention that aloe vera has been associated with, uh, with gastrointestinal, magtarm cancer. There came a recent study on that, by the way. Uh, otherwise, I think it's time to act. That's the basis of my conclusion.